Uh, my boy, Roland C.J. Alexander, on tour right now with who? Oh, the Clock Sisters. All right, well, tell us what it's about. Um, well, uh, it's, a, it's a great experience to be a part of uh, what I consider to be history. Uh, you look at uh, gospel groups and you can't help but think of the Clock Sisters. And to be a part of anything that they're doing is, uh, you know, to me, a great honor and a privilege. And I, I don't take it lightly, so I'm enjoying every day of it. So. Hey, yeah, well, uh, you're a young man now. Um, how did you come about to uh, get on this tour? You know, um, well, my father. Who's your father? My father, he's Ronald Alexander Senior. He I'm plays. Ronald does he play bass as well? My, Ron, my father, he plays the organ. And um, what happened was when uh, their mother was still alive. Their mother. Uh, Dr. Matty Moss Collard. Okay. Um, he used to play organ and direct choirs with her. So I grew up calling all of them aunties and Mama K, Aunt Dorinda, Aunt Jackie, <laughs> Aunt Tweaky. So it's kind of like I'm, I feel like I'm a part of the family. And, um, you know, I play at Grady Emanuel where the pastor is, Pastor John Drew Sheard. And, um, you know, it's just kind of, you know, it's family and then it's favor too. Because I know it's a million jokers out here that, you know, can do what I'm doing. But, um, you know, God saw fit to let me do it. So, you know. Thank God. Yeah, now when you guys, when you play together, and uh, what's the um, the feeling that you get? Is it uh, elation? Is it, you know, do you, it, does it take you back to when you were small? Um, it's it's kind of like, man, well, I, it's, it's kind of like I'm, I don't, I can't even, I don't even know how to describe it. It's. Is it that great? Yeah. It's just, <laughs> I, I, I enjoy every minute of it from as soon as the, you know, the machine is pushing, the track starts, it's. It's, um, it's an experience that, you know, I wouldn't trade for anything in the world. Now, what about um, the uh, when you guys are, are ministering you know, the Word of God? Oh, well, you, you know, know, that's, 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 it's, it's, it's very powerful every night. And every night is, you know, definitely anointed. You know, Aunt Dorinda, she can preach, ain't care, she can go. So, you know, they always have a word from God. And each night, you know, we all, even though we're doing the same show, it's they do something different or say something different, you know, every night that's encouraging. So that's 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 really a, a big part of why it's it feels so great, and, you know. Well, as a young man, how how is it for guys that look up to you and coming up the rigors of being on a tour like this? Ah, uh, well, it's it's definitely it's definitely draining, you know. Uh, you're in. You know, you're on a bus all night or, you know, a tour bus or whatever. And, you know, they got little bunk beds, but that's that's nothing like sleeping in your own bed. And then, you know, you get up, you know, you got a you know, little chance to rest, maybe grab something to eat. Then you come to the venue, and you're at the venue pretty much all day uh, sound checking and making sure everything is all right for the show for that evening. And uh, I guess the biggest thing about being on a tour is like this is just really being comfortable with the music. Um, if you were, you know unsure of something that, you know, if I was unsure of, you know, the set, it would really, you know, I, I wouldn't have nearly as much fun as I do because, you know, being able to know the music, that, that really puts you at ease, you know, you can, you know, concentrate when you got time down to relax instead of listening to music, trying to learn with parts and stuff. And then knowing the music allows you to be more creative, mm -hmm. you know, every night, you know, even, you know, since you know where it's going, Know, explore different ways to get there, and you know, it, it, it just you know, that's great. Now tell all your your, your fans your MySpace address, uh, so we know where to look you up at. Um, you, my MySpace is <laughs> MySpace dot com slash Xander Z A N D E R the Great, and it's G and then an eight after that, and uh, you should pop up. My face should pop up. Okay, now for all the all the technical guys that watch you, what are, what is your weapon of choice as far as uh, instruments? Um, well, I play right now a Lakeland 5502 uh, with the Bartolini's in it, uh, and then I have a uh, Fender Jazz that uh, four string that I um, I took you know the factory pickups in. I took those out and put Bartolini's in them. I'm a Bartolini man. I love the sound with a um, Aguilar preamp on the inside. So, you know, that's that's really beefy and those are those are my two swords of choice. <laughs> okay.
Last but not least, your are, are your parents living? Yes, yes they are. Now, or, what explain to like some of the younger guys come and uh, that hasn't been on tour yet. How is it to how is it when they feel that you separate yourself from your parents or your your parents separate themselves from you when they don't see you for weeks at a time? Um, well, at first, you know, the, the first half of the, the first time we went out, um, it was kind of it was kind of it was it was hard for my mother. My mother, she is a she has a sweetheart. She is a darling. She's very loving and caring. So for her only son to be going away from home for you know weeks at a time you know hard on her the more you do it the more they become comfortable with it when they see you gone and you come back and you're still healthy you're not missing no teeth you know <laughs> right, nothing like that you know then then you know they they kind of become at ease with uh you know really just letting go and letting you grow up uh, my father he was he was cool with it cuz it was something that he did when he was younger so he could relate to it, and you know, it was it wasn't as part of a process for him, you know. So, you know, they're both loving people, and I I love you guys to death, mom and pops. Last but not least, what would you say to the guys coming up behind you, or the guys that you mentor about um, professionalism um, and and being where you're supposed to be and doing what you're supposed to do? Um, well, and being in the uh, being a musician, you know, a lot of people don't look at it. I look at it as look at it as we're 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 playing for God, you know, we're 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 ministering through music, but at the same time we're providing a service. It's ministry, but at the same time there's also a business aspect to it. To it. You can't, you know, you can't be coming into rehearsals late. You can't be showing up for gigs late. You can't be showing up for gigs not knowing the music. You know, all of that. When you when you do stuff like that, that takes away from you know what's going to happen or what's supposed to happen, and you know you won't work like that. You know all it'll take is you know one or two times, and you show up late or you get on the gig and don't know what you're doing, flubbing, they go your call. You, you know that's that's and and, and 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 that's a bad feeling, especially when you know you can do it. Now you know it's different to you know take on something that you may not be prepared for. But to be able to do something and then just have the attitude of, well, I can do it, so, you know, whatever, that's, that's wrong. And